Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening to The Value of Truth. I am Brian Price, and today is Saturday, January 24th, 2015. And I hope you're having a wonderful weekend this Saturday. And remember that tomorrow is church, so be sure to go to church tomorrow. And I wanted to talk with you about the subject of prospering in God's work. You know, throughout this week, we, if any of you have jobs, we went to our jobs and we did some sort of work there, and it often seems as though we're just doing some mindless, uh, purposeless job, the purposeless work that really means nothing. And the scripture says that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So understand that no matter where you are, you could be doing a very good work for God, if you look at it that way, that um, ultimately the the glory goes to God, the greater good goes to other people, and you're ultimately doing something that impacts the world in some positive way, um, whether it be feeding uh, the hungry or clothing the naked or uh, doing something as simple as doing janitor work and cleaning up. It goes to a greater good, and people see your hard work, and people appreciate it, but especially the Lord appreciates what you do. And we're fulfilling God's commandment in which he says that six days out of the week, you're supposed to do all of your work. And then the seventh day, which is Saturday, you're supposed to rest. So um, I wanted to discuss with you the subject of prospering in God's work and that we can often be caught up in our day-to-day lives and doing the, the work that we have before us without prosperity. We can often do work without the prosperity of God, and I want to tell you how you can prosper in all that you do. And the key to this blessing, the key to this prosperity is the Bible. The key to this uh, prospering in whatever we do is, is to meditate in the law of God. It's to um, take heed to the commandments of God, and that is really essentially it. And I'm going to read to you something from the book of Chronicles, chapter number 22. It says, Now, my son, the Lord be with thee, and prosper thou, and build the house of the Lord thy God, as he hath said of thee. Only the Lord give thee wisdom and understanding, and give thee charge concerning Israel, that thou mayest keep the law of the Lord thy God. Then shalt thou prosper, if thou takest heed to fulfill the statutes and judgments which the Lord charged Moses with concerning Israel. Be strong and of good courage. Dread not, nor be afraid. Uh, notice here in First Chronicles chapter number 22 that King David charged his son Solomon to keep the law of the Lord thy God and to build the house of God. So uh, the whole reason for the house of God, the temple of God being built, was so that the whole world could know God as their Savior. And so that was the mission that King David had in his heart. He wanted to do it himself, but God had told him he wasn't allowed to do that since he had so many wars in his in his life. And uh, he promised David that his son Solomon would build the temple, which did, of course, happen later on. But here we see the charge that King David gave to Solomon And he told him, look, go and do the work and prosper and God be with you. And so as long as you just simply take heed to keep the law of the Lord your God, then you will prosper. And that was the commandment. That was the promise. We also read in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8 through 9, it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. You know, when I think about certain churches out there, you know, and how small they are, and I think about some of the Baptist churches I've seen, and, and just the building itself could maybe only hold about 50 people at most. I think, you know, I wonder how how large of a congregation that church is. It can't be very big. And I think about the pastor and, you know, perhaps how much schooling he had and uh, how much effort he's put into building this church. And I think, you know, that's that's got to be very discouraging when you, you put on you put in all this effort and you see very little uh, fruit in return. But, you know, the Bible promises us that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, you know, and I think 
these people who may think they're doing not very much, you know, in reality, they, they're having a great impact on the lives of the people around them, even if it's just a very small congregation, you know, and there's something out there uh, for all of us to do. There's some sort of work that we can all participate in. You know, Jesus gave the charge to preach the gospel to all 12 of his disciples. Uh, and at that time, it was actually 11 since Judas had taken his own life. But nonetheless, uh, Jesus gave his whole group of disciples the charge to preach the gospel. And that's the, that's the key here is that, you know, friend, you have been given the charge to preach the gospel. You have been given the responsibility to tell other people about eternal life in Jesus Christ. And that is the work of God that has been placed before us. And the Bible tells us that God would be with us and that he would prosper us, as he said, as long as we are just willing to do it and to meditate in the word of God. Another passage in scripture says this in Psalms chapter one, it says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night and and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper Uh, notice it says here in verse 3 that uh, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season you know not every fruit is going to bring not every tree is going to bring forth fruit at the same time You know, you have some trees that bring forth fruit in, you know, September and others in late October. But in his season is the key here is that, you know, certain trees bring forth fruit in different seasons. And so you have to be patient with the process. You have to be patient with the work of God that is before you that you're not always going to see immediate results. You have to be patient. And the Bible promises that whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You know, and let me just encourage you that if the only convert you ever get is just one soul, my friend, that is fruit in your account. Uh, I think about the um, Old Testament Saint Noah. And do you realize that Noah had very, very few converts in his day? The Bible says he was a preacher of righteousness. You know, he preached the word of God. But he had no converts. The only converts he had were the people in his immediate family. So if the only people you ever get into the family of God is your immediate family, then, friend, you've done all that uh, is required of you. You've done enough. You've you've got fruit in your account. And uh, the Bible says, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You know, it was a result of Noah's faithfulness that his family was not only saved, but the generations following Noah were saved as well. You know, the passing down of the of the religion of of monotheism, belief in Jehovah God, it was this teaching, you know, generational teaching that saved uh, the children later to come in those following generations of Noah, you know, so Noah was actually a result of the salvation of many souls, not just the ones in his own household, but those who continued the faith in the generations following him. So friend, realize that whatever you do in the Lord is going to prosper and you have to be patient with the process. You have to be patient with God to to see you through and just uh, stay encouraged. So thanks for listening to The Value of Truth. God bless you. I'm Brian Price.